going on, everybody? Eric Lindquist at Stochastic here on the Chopper channel, coming to you with another edition of Lindy's Leans, Likes, and Locks NBA Edition. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Goes a long way for me on this video. Goes a long way for you. That way you become a prize whenever great content is going live here at our little neck of the YouTube woods. I've been sitting in this chair 15 hours yesterday, 13 hours thus far today. Got up for 6. It is just coming to you after 7 p.m. my time. And boy, you know what? Worth it. Worth it. Successful first day. Wanted to hit the ground running for everybody in the MLB streets. Felt good to get a couple of Ws. Wasn't perfect by any means, but overall, really good analysis, really good reads, and obviously got a little bit of luck on our side. Also got a little bit unlucky with the Yankees. They should have won that game running away because Framber Valdez does not have it anymore here. Um, we'll see as everything finalizes here in the last couple of games. Uh, the Celtics decided to, well, they're in overtime and... I would like to tell over time so they could try to win by 13. That'd be cool. But Atlanta just played some really, really good ball here. Uh, Herb Jones going completely ballistic here in this Pelican spot. Uh, as is CJ McCollum. CJ McCollum playing really, really well here. Uh, but 17, 4 and 2. Zion probably going to fall short. So the NBA streets suffered a little bit. But overall, it's been a really, really good couple of weeks uh, in the NBA streets and got back on track with Jordan Poole. Oh, so yeah, this is going to be another lackluster week, it looks like, from the NBA perspective. But overall, hopefully you feel good about the work we've done here in the last uh, two and a half, three months in the NBA streets. Yeah, it's basically since the calendar turned over, been hot fire. And you guys were just so nice to me this week. Help, uh, help me keep going in the NBA streets, that's for sure. Check out Bet365 down below if you have access to it in your state. Uh, I need a drink of water. Just, woo -hoo -hoo. It's been a lot of sports here today, and now I've got my Iowa State Cyclones to go sweat. Let's go, State! I'm probably going to regret saying that, and everybody in the comment section below is going to make fun of me if Illinois just destroys them, you know. Go, State. Producer Jacob, we got a lot of games to talk. 12 games. We're going to talk fast. Let's get to the picks. Game number one, Golden State Warriors taking on the Charlotte Hornets. A shout-out to Mr. Brandon Miller. I almost said Bobby Miller because he's pitching for the Dodgers on Friday. They'll both be playing sports. So that's cool. Good job. Good effort, Eric. Wait, way to go there. But Golden State here, 11 and a half point favorites. Draymond Green gets ejected and it was just ridiculous. This guy's out of control. Can we get him a hug? Can we do something? He said he was reformed. He said he's doing better. He said all the right things. And then he just does spastic stuff like that. And I don't know. I don't think he's going to get suspended for it. We'll find out. Got ejected. You had Steve Kerr say he deserved to be ejected. It was stupid. And I'm like, wow, Steve Kerr even turned in on him to some extent. Or I guess just trying to put the wrath of God in him because they can't win a title without him. And well, I don't know if they're title contenders at all, but like in the West, it's more open than it's been in years past. In my opinion, I know that Jokic and Murray, they were the perfect storm there. And a lot of their bench issues have gone away because apparently Reggie Jackson and Peyton Watson can play. But we're not talking about that one, although I'd rather talk about the implications there than this game. I do think the pace of this one is a little bit in question. We do have Golden State getting a lot of their pieces back. They're 11th in terms of pace, but with Draymond, Chris Paul, Andrew Wiggins, a lot of these guys now back hanging out. I'm not in love with attacking anything here, but the under is projecting out well. I'm going to call it a lean at 216 and a half. I mean, Charlotte's been one of the worst offensive teams, period, even though, again, Brandon Miller, shout out, the GOAT. Well, he's not the GOAT. He's kind of a weird person. But Brandon Miller's really good at basketball. So shout out for him for that. I, He's a fun rookie. That's all I got for you. Don't have a lot here either. We've seen the Lakers. We've seen ND. We know exactly what we're walking into. Oh, yeah. Who is on the Q tag? Because it's everybody. You got LeBron. You got AD. They're going to be questionable yet again. And we've seen them sit. Sometimes maybe sit. Sometimes maybe play. I don't know. Something like that. They're the only two Q, Q tags in the entire game. They obviously matter a ton, but I, both, I think they both play. Another awful game to bet. Over 240. It's the only thing that's remotely close for me. And I have it at 242, so it's not going to be on the card. Yuck. Get me out of here. Next up, we've got the Clippers, Orlando. This one I want to talk about because finally we've made it to a play. And obviously with 12 games and then 10 in the MLB streets, check out MLB Lindy's. Obviously, we are going to smash in the MLB streets. I am quite positive of such things. But are we going to smash something in this game? Why, yes, yes, we are kind of. I'll explain. The Clippers take on the Orlando Magic, and it's nice to run into some of these true center situations for one guy whose minutes have kind of been sporadic in a weird way for me lately. 
That's Aviga Zubats. Now, starting on the Orlando side, we saw a, a weird starting lineup, I would say. They started Markel Fultz. Now, Gary Harris is off the injury report. I expect him to just take back over those starting duties. But weird that they had Markel Fultz go instead of anybody. I know it wasn't a weird starting lineup a year ago. That was the starting lineup, but it just caught me a little bit off guard. Markel Fultz didn't do anything. It was very strange because, again, just keep him coming off the bench. Keep limiting the minutes. Keep doing whatever. And Oh, the East, you're not going to win it this year anyway. But Avika Zubats, friends, you get Wendell Carter on one side, you get Mo Wagner, you get Kogo Batadze watching from the bench, I suppose, which is, again, still so wild to me because he's so good defensively. But Avika Zubats, friends, 18, 29, 24, 27 minutes. They've been all over the place, and I think it's a little bit matchup dependent. Clippers have struggled here. They did find a way to get that W, and then Kelly Oubre went ballistic, and we all saw it. It's a whole thing, but... Azika Zubats' averages on the season, when we're talking about 26.1 minutes per game in the 16 games that he's played, 11.3, 9.1, 1.4. Now, obviously, you got to take it down a little bit to account for the matchup because the matchup isn't exactly ideal. Orlando, second in adjusted defensive rating. Isn't that wild? Second in adjusted defensive rating, the five seed in the East Orlando Magic. However... They've had the easiest strength of schedule in the entire NBA. Thought that was kind of a, an interesting footnote. You start to get some of these better teams showing up in Orlando, and I think it's going to bode well for competitive spots on both sides. And a team like the Clippers that are going to have a true center out there for more minutes, I don't think we're really going to have any reason to go small and try to go to some of those like Kawhi at the five lineups that we saw against like Minnesota. Those are like double bigs where you had Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert out there. Talked about that the other night for anybody who gave a shit. Maybe you don't. Maybe, I don't know. But there's a bet here. 18 and a half points plus rebounds plus assists. I got to say though, I'm looking at a projection site that may or may not move this line down. And I feel pretty confident in Avika Zubats. This is a good play now. I'm going to wait and see if we can't get 18 fired up here tomorrow i'm very curious again it's not a perfect science for things but you can kind of see where the public is moving it and now over on odd chopper we have the ability to track the lines yes you can go to the live odds page and for player props and for outrights whether that's totals whether that's money lines whether that's spreads you can track the line in real time at the sports books available to you it's an incredible tool i'm going to utilize that more and more i think you should too but I have a tab open on Avika Zubats, and I'm going to wait and see if this moves just ever so slightly. Or maybe I get a better number on 18 and a half PRA. But I promise you, it will be on the card. I just have to call it a lean like because these are the rules that I've made because I haven't bet it yet. And if you want all those great tools and content that we have here, OS Premium Tools, Discord, or Insider Access, again, the new live odds page is incredible. You can track every book that you have access to in your state, and you have the ability to track the line, see where it opened, track it by hour, track it by day. It is super insanely cool. So if you want to check that out, do so at the link below. $14.95 for a week, $49.95 monthly, but that's not all, friends. You'll get the Discord Insider Access. That's myself, uh, Greg Ehrenberg, Isaiah Suaros, uh, you know, Nathan Joyce, everybody you know and love here at Odd Shopper, giving you an opportunity to see exactly what we're betting it when we're betting it. So $14.95 weekly. Oh, and if you use promo code LINDY, L-I-N-D-Y, 20% off of that. That becomes $12 for your first week or $42 for your first month. Check it down at the link below. Back to the picks we go. Another prop that I like. Yeah, we got a couple of props. It's nice when you just have two games that exist on a Thursday. They then give you the opportunity to jump in on some numbers that you think you can be early to. I don't know why I had to shake my hands like that. Detroit plus two and a half taking on Washington. The battle of who could care less. Great song by Ben Folds 5. Rest. We're not going to sing. That, we don't have time for that shit. We have time, though, to talk through what's going on here with Detroit. Kate Cunningham, questionable again. He played. Jaden Ivey sat out last time. Kind of a weird flip-flop scenario where I thought it would work the other way around. Alas, earwax. That's from Harry Potter. But i got to say, everybody on the Washington side perfectly healthy, and yet, Jordan Poole, the happiest I've ever been with somebody. 15 and a half points goes a bajillion points over can I take three of those and put them to Chris Middleton the other day? Actually, I just needed two. A lot of people needed three, though, so I was cheering for three for everybody. What in hell? What were we even watching? Chris Middleton, I can't with you. But 
Jordan Poole got things on the right track in the lock department. That felt good. As for Washington through and through, I think we're going to be shorting Jordan Poole in one major department here, and it has more to do with the fact that Kyle Kuzma, he's back. You got a healthier team. You got Denny Avdia playing more minutes. And Denny Avdia, friends, that's going to be the main catalyst for what I believe this play to be. You get 34, 35 minutes of a Denny Avdia out there, that's a dude with a 17.2% assist rate. That's not exactly zero. Kyle Kuzma, 20.4% assist rate. Been pretty stable throughout this season. Pretty decent. 19.4% for Jordan Poole, but more of the usage here of late, less of the passing of late, doing more of the Jordan Poole thing that you might expect, friends. I think six and a half assists is a big number. When we're talking about minus 110, like a standard minus 110 over at DraftKings, under, under. Now, if Denny Avdia gets ruled out from the clouds, I apologize. Don't overextend your bankroll. Half of a unit. Don't go crazy. But don't forget that boy told you under six and a half assists. I can't believe we're doing this again. My fourth points lock of the week. This is not intentional. This is not something that I go out of my way to plan ahead of time. I simply go where the numbers tell me. And the numbers are telling me in the Bulls, minus five and a half, taking on the Brooklyn Nets. That I have to take an over here on McCall Bridges. It has gotten too far. We've gone too far in the other direction. And part of that is a goat like Cam, uh, Cam Thomas. I, I mean, Cam Thomas was very nice to me from a fantasy perspective the other night, if you will. But Cam Thomas is a usage hawk. There's no doubt about it. If you want to point to the main guy that McCall Bridges has had struggles because of, Cam Thomas eating up 30%. Yeah, 29.5% usage over the course of this season. 31 minutes a game here for Cam Thomas. Somebody who got inserted into the starting lineup. Chucks at nauseum. Ad, ad, ad nauseum. That's what I meant to say. It is absurd, friends. It's absurd. But it's gone too far here. And I get it. We have other pieces that are not exactly helping his case here in terms of usage, in terms of being able to go out and create for everybody. Dennis Smith Jr. off the injury report. Noah Clowney now starting to enter the rotation for God knows what reason. Jalen Wilson got a spot start. And of course... You got one guy in Cam Johnson, but he's going to be out for another couple of games. So as it stands right now, I look at the board with Schroeder, Cam Thomas, Dorian Finney-Smith, Nicholas Claxton, and of course our guy, Mikhail Bridges. I think this is going to be a decent spot at home for this game to stay competitive. And I think that that's a huge part of the minutes that I'm projecting here for Mikhail Bridges and why it is that I think 24.3% usage might not be indicative of this specific spot. Now, he's one of the best two-way players in the entire NBA. He's got a better three-point percentage than Cam Thomas, but the usage has been five and change less than that of Cam Thomas. I think this is going to be a difficult spot for Cam Thomas more so. Uh, obviously, this is going to be a Bulls matchup that they want to slow it down. But Alex Caruso, that is a defender, friends. We're talking 99th percentile for defender in the NBA, plus 3.6 defensive, plus minus. I think he gets more of the Cam Thomas assignment than the Mikhail Bridges assignment. And that opens up an opportunity for whether it's Ayo Desunmu, whether it's, you know, uh, different mi minutes for Tory Craig, DeMar DeRozan. Those are going to be more of the dudes that are coveraging here. And I'm not a big player against position guy. I don't really factor that in whatsoever. But when you see a guy like Alex Crusoe on the other side, and you have a pretty good hunch he's going to be on Cam Thomas for a majority of it, I don't see... How you don't love getting to Mikhail Bridges at 17 and a half points, 215 total, competitive game environment at home. I think this is a buy low spot on a number that is just dropped to a point where I can't get by it. Mikhail Bridges averaging 20 and a half per game. Yes, this is a pace down spot. Yes, it's been brutal here of late. Got to 47 minutes and still didn't go over 19 and a half against Washington. But at 17 and a half here against Chicago, I am dipping my toes in the pool. It is, well, not in the Jordan pool. We like him from the last lock. But yeah, Mikhail Bridges over 17 and a half points. Let's go two and two on these points locks for the week. And it make me feel like I got out of here, not with a win, because lost a little bit overall, like 0.2 units and change. But either who, we're just staying honest. Mikhail Bridges over 17 and a half points. My lock, favorite play for Friday. I don't have a lot to talk about in this one. Philly taking on Cleveland. You do get Donovan Mitchell back into the mix here, but that just creates a cluster, and the books aren't going to drop the lines until we know that news. And just be on alert. Have Twitter up. Set Well, X. Sorry. X, go and give it to you. It's a whole thing. But Donovan Mitchell tweets out, 
the, the tweet. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Donovan Mitchell will tweet out and let you know if he is playing basketball tomorrow or not. Now, he's upgraded to questionable with this nasal fracture for the first time. So I'm assuming he plays, but have the tweet confirmation on deck. I don't know if we'll be able to react to anything. I don't know if we're going to get any numbers to account for it, but I'm calling this a lean Billy plus seven and a half. Donovan Mitchell will get ruled in, public money come in, have it pushed to eight and a half, nine. Maybe we can consider it more than likely a stay away game, but like, yeah, this game sucks. This game kind of sucks too, but we're probably going to bet it. Portland at Miami. Uh, I'm going to call it a lean for the time being, but I got to say, I don't think DeAndre Ayton ends up playing here. Portland kind of punting on the season. DeAndre Ayton looked really, really good. I think they kind of want to put him on bubble wrap here, especially in a tough matchup against Bam Adebayo. Do you really want to put him in harm's way? Season's coming down to an end. They shut down some other guys, you know, Shane Sharp, Anthony Simons. I doubt we see Malcolm Brogdon the rest of the season. Tamani Kamara going to be out for this one. Maybe you just have Aiton go out and just feel confident that, hey, I can play with the best of them and do my thing. And I'm the number one pick, even though you were still the wrong pick. But that's something everybody already knows. Uh, DeAndre Aiton, friends, we'll see. Uh, Phoenix has to live with that instead of Portland. Portland's had their own center issues in the past. Bill Walton. We won't talk about the other guy because I'm a big stand that injuries are not fair to a lot of people. I guess that would be Bill Walton as well. But anyway, you guys don't care about things from forever ago. Let's talk about today. I think Miami's a spot to potentially fire up here. Delano Banton's been awesome to watch. Awesome, awesome piece. Said it from the get-go that he's kind of impressive. He's kind of enjoyable. Scoot Henderson is terrible right now. Uh, this dude, you want to talk about... Not going to go there. What you say has ramifications. Scoot Henderson's a bust. That's... Sorry, I had to say it. I got Tress. Tress. Sorry. Scoot Henderson's a bust! I thought Scoot Henderson was going to be good, too. So this... He's good defensively. He'll probably be in the league for a while. He's just going to have to be a dude who never shoots. I think that might be it. Or we get him a shooting coach. And he doesn't leave the gym every single day in Portland for the next six months. That might be the other idea. Probably needs longer than that. Have you seen his true shooting numbers, friends? 47.7% true shooting. 45.3% shooting at the rim is so bad that I don't have words for it. Five feet and in. He is second percentile in the NBA. And he's supposed to be an athletic 6'2 guard who swerves and does whatever. This is why they're sh shutting down this G League un Ignite BS whateverness. Can't deal with that anymore. It's also because NIL deals are going to take over and it is what it is. And you just shouldn't have it exist as it is. But it, that's a conversation for a different show. 14 and a half for Portland. I'm going to wait for the eight news. I'm probably going to bet it even if it moves to 15 and a half, 16. Because again, this is the second worst team that I have evaluated in the entire NBA as it stands right now with their current lineup without Brogdon, without Shaden Sharp, do 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 do, without Mr. Anthony Simons. This is a abysmal, no good, terrible team. Where Delano Banton, why wouldn't you just play him 40 minutes a night and let him score 40 a night? That'll be fun to watch. Won't be betting this whatsoever. Phoenix, I'm definitely cheering for Oklahoma City. 48 and a half. We're still looking good for the under. Phoenix needs to win seven of their remaining games. I believe they have nine or ten remaining. They're going to have to play really above their head. Now, it sucked that they ended up beating Denver again in Denver. What is Denver doing to me? Two losses? Two losses? I have to inherit two losses from Denver? Again, Phoenix has the most difficult strength of schedule. We're heavily on the under 48 and a half wins. It's still looking phenomenal. So I'm not going to complain that much. But I at least want to complain that they beat Denver twice here in the second half of the season. That is just not fair. Those are, should have been easy wins. Her name is Chastity. She is white trash. Love that movie. That's right. Go comatose for me, baby. I'd rather watch that movie than, than cover this one. But it's going to be a fun game. It's going to be an enjoyable game. I'll probably end up watching it with my parents. Happy Easter to those who celebrate. But I'm just saying, it is what it is. I have no bets from it. It's just so difficult with SGA questionable. 
Please play SGA. I need you guys to beat Phoenix and just put this thing to rest already. I don't want to hedge out with a week left. I just refuse. I refuse. I have stood pat. I have not hedged yet. I should probably be done complaining. We have a lot of editing to do. I apologize. Producer Jacob, let's get out of here. Uh, over 230, favorite play right now, but SGA is questionable. He matters. You got other dudes of Phoenix side, questionable. They matter. Nurkic, questionable. The... Let's get out of here. To the man who has no regard for humanity or livelihood of any of his starters, that's for sure. The Knicks taking on the Spurs. They're up 30. Doesn't matter. Miles McBride stays in the basketball game. Miles McBride is just going to play 40 plus minutes a night. It is impossible for me to project any other team in the entire NBA quite like this, but it is what it is. I will say, Josh Hart came off the floor 34 minutes. They showed a little bit of reservation there with him. Nice to see. Miles McBride, 40 minutes. They were up 40, and they have Miles McBride out there continuing to play basketball. He had like 24 points in the first quarter and a half of that basketball game. Finishes with 29, 7 and 3. You know what? Screw it. If you can't beat him, join him. Even with Alec Burks coming back tomorrow, I still think we see Miles McBride play 44 minutes minimum. Like, this is absurd. I've never had to project somebody like this during the regular season. During the playoffs, you kind of project everybody like this who's a main culprit and star uh, starter and main piece of this team. But Miles McBride was never a main piece of this team at any point, even after the Emmanuel quickly trade. Do you know how many minutes he's averaging a game on the season? They've played 59. He's played 59 of the 72 games that are going to exist here. So 59, he's played 72 that the Knicks have played thus far. He's only averaging 17 and a half minutes a game. When did this happen? When did Tom Thibodeau say, Miles McBride, you're the guy who's going to play 44, 46 minutes a night, and I don't care. I don't understand. I don't. I've been doing a lot of complaining. I apologize tonight. Miles McBride over 23 and a half PRA. It's minus 105 on DraftKings. How that is inside of minus 110, I don't understand. But the guy never leaves the floor, even though the rebound rate is absolute dog shit and he's not asked to do such things. Probably why he averages 1.3 of those a game and has had tops of five even when he's playing 44 minutes a night. Gotta say, Miles McBride. I'll just back the minutes. Screw it. Also back this, friends. Bet five. Get 150 in bonus bets down at the link below. There are 10 states. Yeah, you heard me. 10 states where Bet365 is legal and active. Colorado, Indiana, Iowa, New Jersey, Virginia, Arizona, Kentucky, Louisiana, and of course, North Carolina, the newest of the states. To get legalized sports betting, yay! Check out Bet365 at the link below. Turn one uh, $5 into 150. We've got baseball. We've got NBA. We've got college basketball over the weekend. We got... I know Ben Raz is going to be betting some crazy soccer in the premium discord. By the way, he's been cashing all of those for me. So tail him, but bet five, get 150 at the link below for bet 365. If you're 21 and over 18 and over in Kentucky, if you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Back to the picks we go. Oh, it's so sad. Minnesota taking on Denver here in this one. Denver, you made me so sad the other night. Just beat Phoenix. Do what you're supposed to do. You lost it for me, Gunner. You lost it for yourself. Let me know who that was, and what movie that was, the link below. Goat childhood movie. Goat childhood movie. I want to ruin it for you. I'm not going to. I want to see. Who knows? Don't, do, don't you dare Google. Don't you dare. Stop. Put down the phone. Don't Google. Let me know if you know that movie down below. But anyway, Minnesota, plus six and a half. You're taking on Denver. I'm still bad at Denver. That's what it is. Well, Mike Conley playing some good ball because he kind of has to. You got some dinged up dudes. Nas Reed been playing some ball too. Anthony Edwards always playing ball, even though he's got a Q tag. And Rudy Gobert, I think they both play here. The big question, right knee inflammation, Jamal Murray. I think it's at least worth it to entertain betting Minnesota money line here. And here's why. If you get Jamal Murray out, I totally get that Jokic has just smashed, annihilated Gobert at times. He's smashed and annihilated a lot of dudes. But Rudy Gobert is still number one in defensive defensive rating in the entire NBA by a pretty considerable margin. I don't see how you don't feel good about having a ticket with Rudy Gobert active, Nas Reed playing the way he is, Mike Conley playing the way he is, 
and Mr. Anthony frickin' Edwards, the GOAT himself. I'd feel fantastic if I got Jamal Murray, and I think he's the most in question of those Q tags by a wide, wide margin. We've already seen six and a half move to six in a couple of spots. Now, if you get Jamal Murray in, it's going to go the other way. If you get Anthony Edwards and Rudy Gobert, God forbid, out, it's going to go the other direction as well. So, uh, gotta say, it's something I'm kind of thinking about just all or nothing with the Minnesota money line, where I'll have a very small investment, could be half a unit, even maybe a little bit smaller. But in the event Jamal Murray is ruled out, I know Jokic can still smash. I know Jokic is still the best player in the entire NBA. But there's no doubt that this is a good matchup for Minnesota based on the way that they play basketball. You get Michael Porter Jr., Aaron Gordon there, Nas Reed and Jaden McDaniels, just fine matchups. Anthony Edwards does have to contend with KCP defense. That's a real thing. And then Peyton Watson, Reggie Jackson off the bench, Christian Brown, they've been playing well, but like, Mike Conley running the points still feel like that's still a win no matter who else they uh, whom whomever else shows up there. So at least think about it with me here. If we can see plus 220, plus 225, and we get any news and you can react to it, I'm gonna try to react to it. I like the Minnesota money line here as a sneaky, sneaky little play, and I love the sneakiness, sir. That's a different move. Two games to go. I've done a lot of analysis today. Hit the like button, subscribe button, notification bell as we talk about Jalen Green, because who else do you talk about? 11 wins in a row now or 10 wins, 11 wins? They're winning a million games in a row. The Houston Rockets taking on the Utah Jazz. Wild little run out for them. They lose Alperin Shangoon, and then it's like Band of Brothers, and they go to war together every single night, and they've got Dylan Brooks to really play devil's advocate. And they've got or to play the devil, sorry. And Amin Thompson, who's been rebounding and doing amazing things. Jabari Smith, minutes in the production have been a little bit spotty. But Jock Lando off the bench. Aaron Holiday, Jeff Green, Reggie Bullock, Jay Sean Tate. Dare I say the Celtics would have a championship if they had Ime Udoka as the coach? Do I say that? Do I want producer Jacob to quit on the spot? I probably won't say that right now. But he's probably the best coach in the entire NBA. Him and Eric Spolstra. I mean, Eric Spolstra has the longer track record. Pop did it once upon a time, but I think I could have coached Tim Duncan. Hey, Tim Duncan. Shoot it off the glass, you seven-foot-one human you. Yeah, useful. Hey, just work your ass off nonstop. I'll just give the ball to you every possession, and then I'll get lucky with Tony Parker and Manu Ginobili, and then I'll, you know, Boris Diaw. Oh, <laughs> These are good teams. These are fun times. Anyway, Houston has been playing good ball, but I'd be looking at shorting Jalen Green here. 29 and a half points. That's a big number. It's a big, big number. I know he's going to have all the usage and all the land, but he's got to have a bad shooting game eventually, right? 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 Yeah, I'm probably not going to bet this one. Last game of the night. Very strange play for me. Dallas and Sacramento running it back. Got to say, I watched that entire basketball game. Dallas beat the shit out of Sacramento. It was wild. And... The refs did let them play a little bit more in Sacramento. This is definitely going to be something that they have to deal with. Getting some physicality in a game seven against Golden State. Getting some physicality in a, a game that definitely matters. And this game, friends, matters big time when we're talking about the Western Conference. Because if you are trying to get yourself out of the play-in tournament, you need to win this game because whoever has it gets the tiebreaker against the other one. Sacramento, 42-30 and 30 right now, sitting at the eighth seed. Dallas, six seed, 43 and 29. That would be, again, a tie there at the seventh seed for the time being, depending on the Phoenix game. They're right between them there at the seventh place spot. But we're going to start factoring in stuff like this because you're going to see the minutes ramped up for guys who matter. And somebody who matters to this team, not necessarily in the way that you might think, but he's been a huge addition for them in a way that I didn't necessarily expect, P.J. Washington. P.J. Washington has been a plus defender Every single season of his NBA career. He's six seven. It's ironic. He also went to Kentucky. So I mean him. I mean Grant Williams can like have coffee during the offseason and be like, huh, aren't we both six seven? Huh. Yeah, we are. Why do we get traded for each other? What's going on? Huh. Well, Grant Williams went to Tennessee, but they're both like it's the Rocky Top and the Kentucky thing. And do you care? You don't care. Let's talk a bet. PJ Washington. I like the over of 12 and a half points plus assists. I think he's gonna run into enough assists just against a Sacramento team that's letting him get the ball on the corner nonstop. Now, they need to fix it because in that first quarter, he just went scorched earth knocking down corner threes, but they don't have a choice. It's Luka Doncic and Kyrie on the floor. That, that 
That's the whole point. P.J. Washington's going to get wide open corner threes. P.J. Washington is going to get uh, slashes to the lane and Harrison Barnes defensive things that don't really matter, friends. It's such an easy play. Uh, almost locked it, but P.J. Washington over 12 and a half points plus assists. Uh, where is that at? It was over even money at DraftKings. Go get that now before it's too late. And that does it for another edition of Lindy's Leans, Lakes, and Locks in the NBA streets. Hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell. Uh, let me know in the comment section below what your favorite plays are here for this Friday slate. Again, it's one of those lackluster back-to-back -back MLB is smashing right off the bat. So that makes me happy. Good to hit the ground running there. NBA, we've had our profit. We will hopefully continue to have our profit because we're going to be betting well into the playoffs here. For sure, friends, check out Bet365 through 21 and over. If you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-GAMBLER. Thank you, Producer Jacob. Long, long little evening here, but it's going to get better. MLB, MLB will be in the, uh, just easing the tension, baby. Just easing the tension. He doesn't care. We're going to go watch my Iowa State Cyclones, friends. Until next time, friends, I'm Eric Lindquist. Best of luck in the NBA streets on Friday.